Peggy 16. You know, there are a lot of similarities between doing art for a video game or doing art for a comic book, but there are huge differences as well. I mean, with a comic book page, you can vary the size of the panels. So you can have a really large detailed panel and then a really small intimate close-up panel. With a game, of course, the screen is always the same size. One of the things I did back in the early 90s when we were creating the game was to produce um, a short comic book. I think it's like, a, like an eight-page story, which is designed to be read before you play the game. It basically sets the background for Foster and his world and how he came to be and how he was adopted by the Aborigines, how he got his name. And it concludes with him being captured and taken on a helicopter to the city and all of a sudden the helicopter malfunctions and dives in towards the city. And that's the end of the comic book. That's the cliffhanger. And then the game begins with the helicopter crashing and Foster escaping into the city and having his, his adventures. One of the aspects of Watchmen that I'd really enjoyed and the other things I'd done was this world building thing of coming up with a world that looked coherent, that could be seen from a number of angles. And you would never fall out of that world of, of characters that remain consistent from picture to picture. At this stage, we pass queries and notes backwards and forwards. This has got a seesaw. This was a seesaw that was gonna put the dog, was gonna dunk the dog in the lake, which I, I know is a favorite moment for a lot of the people who played the game. But I wrote at the side, Chaz, this was Charles, Chaz, I still don't quite get the seesaw gimmick. Can I have a drawing, please? So Charles must have given me a drawing because I then came up with this, where I've resolved what happens with the seesaw. And you put the dog on one end and you drop the bricks on the other and the dog gets catapulted into the, uh, into the lake, much to everybody's um, amusement. Um, and here's an even more finished version of it where we've got an incredible tripod arrangement that, that again makes this whole dog chucking thing feasible. So these are the kind of things you spend hours and hours worrying about and setting out and making them work not only functionally but also so they're reasonably attractive and understandable to um, look at. What was that splashing noise? Where has Spunky gone? Before I did the finished comic book artwork, um, I thumbnailed the whole thing out on one sheet. Uh, and there are some changes between this and the finished published version, but this is basically that comic book describing what's happening in bits of dialogue. And again, trying to make everything work to, to give the information, but also to make sure that the, that the drawings were quite um, attractive. Um, and again, if you're going to draw new characters, you have to design them. And these are the original pencil designs for uh, the security boss, the bad guy, who looks quite sinister, I think. And then uh, Foster's uh, Aboriginal stepdad, um, who's there looking a bit like an extra from Mad Max. And this was the hero of our piece, Foster pretty much a traditional square-jawed butch looking hero with this leather kind of stockman's australian stockman's coat on but again whenever i design a character i like to show them clearly from several angles so i've got something to refer to when i have to draw them from different angles um, and finally something that i came across while we were looking through the archives was this sheet of character studies i did now all the characters in the game only appear as tiny little pixelated uh, figures, but I wanted to have an idea of what they really, really look like. So here's Reich, the baddie, and Lamb, and other ne'er-do-well, and various friends and acquaintances of uh, Foster's, just to make the characters sort of live in my mind um, as I came to do the game 
artwork. So uh, as you can see, we've got lots and lots of these, um, which I've kept because I thought I knew they'd come in handy one day for such an occasion as this. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed looking at them.